Hey everyone, today we are doing a demonstration, a science experiment showing improper use of thermal cameras and how to correctly use them, at least at a very top level. Because this is a common problem, these things are so common now, you could buy these for a couple hundred bucks for phones, that they're kind of proliferating everywhere and they're normally used inappropriately in ways that actually provide temperatures that are completely useless. So we're gonna show why and how that happens, specifically using a case and tempered glass as an example. Before we get into that, this content is brought to you by Catalyst Mints. Catalyst Energy Mints are a zero sugar, zero calorie alternative to energy drinks. They're packed with vitamins and provide a boost without the traditional negatives of those energy drinks. Learn more at the link in the description below and use code GAMERSNEXUS for 5% off. So this is something that we discussed briefly in our EVGA VRM thermals video where we were demonstrating how does a thermal camera respond to a backplate versus a thermocouple or a direct probe. But it's better demonstrated on something like this. I've lately seen a few people pointing thermal cameras at cases that are closed with glass on them or acrylic or something like that. And uh, it's not a good way to get your measurement. So why is that? Well, first to kind of note very briefly how thermal cameras work. The very top level is that with a lower temperature, you're going to have a longer or protracted wavelength. It's obviously, this sees wavelengths that we can't really necessarily see. There is visible spectrum thermal vision, so to speak. If you heat up an iron and you pull it out of a furnace and you look at it, it's probably going to be red or orange or some hot color. And you can tell by looking at that as a human. But we can't always see the heat that something produces. The components in this case, I can't see with my eyes how hot they are, but they produce a, they radiate the heat and that's thermal radiation, which we can measure with a camera like this. Even though this is a cheap one, it's a thermal imaging device. It looks at infrared for, its, uh, for what it's producing when you're seeing the red colors and the blue colors on your screen for the temperature values. But how does it do that? Like I said, the lower temperature is going to be a longer wavelength, and these devices can be customized, but they often show blue for a lower temperature or green. And then the higher temperatures are a much more intense wavelength. They're, the peaks are closer together. And when the peaks are closer together, you end up, uh, it basically means there's a hotter temperature, so whatever you're pointing it at is going to be hotter to touch. And the relationship between the radiation intensity and temperature is the Stefan Boltzmann law, which we won't get into today, that's way out of scope, but you can see the basics on the screen. And the camera sees temperature from a few different sources. So this camera here, the infrared camera, is this is a Seek Thermal one I bought myself. It sees the temperature readout that we get, the sort of human readable temperature, as three different items. There's emission, so what, how much heat is being emitted. There's transmission, or sort of what's going on beneath the surface if heat's being transmitted almost in a subterranean fashion, we can call it below the surface. Uh, and then the third item is what is reflected, and that's the point of this glass, which we can demonstrate really easily. So this is an example of an improper use case for pointing your thermal camera. And we've got other tools for this. I have, for example, uh, thermocouple readers, which it has two K-type thermocouples coming out of it. You configure it to read K-types. You calibrate them. We use boiling water and hot water. I've ca I calibrated them a while ago. So uh, I know the, the range uh, of the two thermocouples, and it's generally about 2.2 Celsius, uh, which I know thanks to Bobby Kinstall from Corsair. And then there's another type of device like this, which you, is basically a laser pointer, and it reads the laser and the temperature of the surface you're pointing at, but this is all kinds of flawed too. Uh, we're not really going to get into that today. What we're getting into is this. So let me do a demonstration. So right now we're looking at the case in front of me, and what it's showing is with the side panel on, we have Prime95 with LFFTs running on the system and Furmark running. So this is a very tortured machine. It's an S340 Elite, pretty bad cooling performance as we've shown. But the temperatures here, it's saying, well, if you point out the CPU cooler area, which by the way, you'll notice this very bad resolution, which you'll see it improves when I remove the glass. CPU cooler area is clearly there. It's somewhere around 35 degrees according to this, but there's a big flaw and that's that there's reflection uh, in the glass. So if we, I can see your legs. Where's my hand? So he can actually, you can see Andrew the cameraman's legs reflected right here. And I think part of my body's reflected here. That's not good. That means you can actually see my hand moving around there in the background too. Uh, it's, it's not quite as easy to see, but there it is over there on the far right side. 
you can see the hand reflected. That's useless. That's not the temperature of the inside of the case. That's the temperature of what's being reflected. So this is part of knowing the emissivity of the object that's under test. If you don't understand the emissivity, what the sort of the emission index is, uh, what the number is, it's 0 to 1.0 is the scale. And this, uh, ideally, you have, let's say, a painted black piece of steel. That would be what you call an ideal black body for, in the world of physics, for measuring temperature. This is not that. Uh, so if we remove this panel, see 40C, you can see my hand holding it up. Let's remove that panel and see how things change. Now we can see the computer. Much different. Let me put this glass down. So now we can actually see the components. You can individually make out the CPU cooler. That's the MSI cooler. You can see the GPU, the backplate, and the VRM area is about 70C from this distance, which is another flaw in these things. And then we can see the individual motherboard components. Can you kind of see the RAM? This is obviously a far different temperature. Now, I, I would not recommend ever taking measurements of components with this because that's not looking at diode temperatures. We don't know what the core temperature is by looking at the temperature of the CPU cooler. We don't know what the GPU core or the VRM temperatures are by looking at the temperature of the heat pipes, which are up here, or of the shroud, or of the backplate. And these, uh, if you have a shinier backplate, even worse. If you have shiny, uh, like copper nickel alloy or something for your, uh, for whatever material you're measuring the thermals of, your reflectivity, your emissive index is probably something like 0.03 or 0.06, something like that, for something shiny like electroplated copper or copper nickel alloy or something like that, totally useless measurement because all we're seeing is the reflection of uh, other things. Basically, we're, If I took a thermocouple and stuck this to the different parts on the system, primarily the reflective ones, we would get a much different temperature and this will take a moment to heat up. So the larger number up here is around 50 Celsius. That's the temperature of the uh, particular heat pipe in the specific spot that I'm touching this thermocouple. The lower left temperature is now the ambient temperature of the room, about 23 Celsius. But we're looking at somewhere under 50 C for this thing, 45, something like that. Let's look back at our thermal camera, see what it thinks it is. The resolution here is not great, but I can still get an idea. Where's our, where's our heat pipe? That would be right about there. And I can't even get an exact measurement, uh, but it is well above 40. This is looking like, let's see, let me use my hand here to pinpoint. There's my hand. So there is the heat pipe. Move my hand. And that's in the red-white area. So it's somewhere in the 70s, high 60s, 70s area. It's not white hot. Uh, that's up here, closer to the PCB. But the point is, it's several degrees higher than what we were seeing with, uh, with the thermocouple. And neither is necessarily a perfect way to measure that. You wouldn't really need to measure a heat pipe. But that's an example of how the uh, emissivity index is interfering with our measurements. You can calibrate these devices, maybe not the phone ones, but a good fluke meter or something, you could calibrate in a way that would better account for the emissivity. And an easy way to do that would be to paint one of these heat pipes just black. And then you take a measurement of it black and you can uh, use that versus the other to get an idea of how do we calibrate this device to read an appropriate temperature. But again, not an ideal use case. What these are useful for, if you look at a system like this, it gives you an idea of where are my hot spots. In the case, even you have to take in all these things to account, like the emissivity, but you can still use it as a good tool to figure out where am I getting a little too hot? Can I move my fans around? It's just not a perfect way to measure. For diodes, you want to use software, uh, like the CPU core temps and the GPU core temps for MOSFETs, you can really only get the case temperature easily anyway, and you would want to use a thermocouple for that. 
Uh, and then anything else, it requires a different type of probe than what we have on the table. So I think that gives an idea of how to use these and how not to use them. Fluke has a really good article. It's a PDF on basically some research they did explaining emissivity and how to use their devices. And they have a really good article we'll put on the screen now where they do a similar test, but a bit more advanced. They bake a block of stainless steel. So they put it in an oven for three hours at a high temperature and they paint half of it black and they leave half of it stainless steel and then take a measurement with one of their meters uncalibrated for the emissivity. And they report a difference of more than 100 degrees Fahrenheit between the two halves. So this is a piece of steel that's been put in an oven. It's one uniform piece. It's the same core temperature. If you were to bore a hole into it and stick a thermometer in there almost like you would do with a steak or something like that, it would be the same temperature on either side within reason. Uh, but they painted one half black and left one half reflective and the difference was something like 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So that further demonstrates this issue where uh, using a, th a thermal camera incorrectly with the glass on, totally useless results of course. We don't get anything close to the temperatures this is actually experiencing, have no resolution, and we're seeing more reflection of me and whomever else is in the room than the internal of the case. But when you pull the glass off, it's still not perfect, so it can't be reported as hard fact what different temperatures are without first accounting for emissivity. Is the thing you're pointing at really shiny? If you've got a CPU cooler, that's something like the old Zalman ones that were just really, really shiny copper or nickel plated copper. Those metrics without calibrating for them are useless. You'd be better off with a thermocouple that you've also calibrated uh, or something else, like just using software to measure core temps like people would normally do. Um, because this is kind of not really a normal way to measure your temperatures, how effective a case is. But I think that's enough for now. So that's the PSA. Uh, if any of you have thermal imaging devices, hopefully you know a bit more about them now. As always, links in the description below for more information. Subscribe for more content. Patreon link in the postal video. If you would like to help us out directly and support more of these, you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.